So we were hoping to have a very short, sharp machine gun fire conversation going here real quick. So I'm going to speed things up by talking really quickly. And uh, I'm first uh, actually going to turn to the Cabinet Secretary, Aidan Mohammed. Aidan is an ex-banker, ran Barclays. He comes out of uh, the corporate sector. He un his capitalism is in his DNA, and that's why he's made such huge strides in things like uh, ease of doing business. It really is a success story. Uh, he doesn't blow his trumpet, but I will. So I am. Uh, Aidan. What are we doing to make this the most attractive destination for folks like the man on your left? So that it's a no-brainer question that comes to Kenya and, you know, there is no competition. Well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Jack for his visit uh, here to Kenya. Uh, I understand it's his first visit on the continent of Africa and he's chosen Kenya to be the first stop. So it says a lot about what you think about the continent, but also Kenya. And for those many Kenyans who send me some goodwill messages, thank you very much. I'm still around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, I think one of the things that uh, I really admire about today is it reminded me of my business school days when you have inspirational leaders who have made it in life, gone through probably one of the most interesting uh, process to get to where they are. Uh, it's very easy to see people when they are, have reached to where they have, but very little is shared in terms of the experience and, and how people got uh, go to that particular point. And when I, you know, to watch Jack speak, it, it really tells a story about the opportunities that many young people, especially on the continent, face. Um, and so this is an opportunity we must grab, and I hope in the next, uh, you know, few hours that he's around, we'll be able to get a lot more. As government, one of the things that uh, we appreciate and uh, really try and work hard on is to deal with the issues of young people. It is probably one of the most talked about topic, but yet one of the most challenging to actually fix. So if you look at the manifesto for, you know, the major political parties today, those issues are the headline, but the execution and making it happen is, is oftentimes the most difficult thing to do. But as government, what we try and do as much as possible is to make it possible for people like Jack and many others, entrepreneurs, to actually thrive in achieving their dreams to make things work. And so, as uh, you mentioned, uh, Ali, the issue around improving our business environment has been the cornerstone of uh, our program in making it easy for entrepreneurs middle businesses, large businesses to thrive. But what we are experiencing and what we are hearing today really is an example of how the shift from the few big businesses that have proven themselves to the millions of small businesses that today contribute so much in our country but have the potential to leapfrog, shifting away from brick and mortar infrastructure technology platform and who better to share some of those experiences than someone like Jack and the Alibaba group to actually share to see how we can uh, move a lot so I would not go into a lot of details in terms of sharing Carol has talked a bit about what we have been able to achieve in the last two years in a row Kenya has been recognized by the World Bank group as the third most improved economy in the world in terms of improving its business environment. And, and, and I think these are things that uh, hopefully would work towards this. What we want to do, and uh, just as I finish, is to say entrepreneurs, young people, men, women, we want to see how we can draw experience from people who have achieved it. And we'd like to say thank you to Jack and his team and the future linkages that we can draw upon to make this work for us. Thank you. Thank you, see us. Um, uh, I, I couldn't agree more with you, Cabinet Secretary. 
It's, I, and uh, I'm going to turn to Dr. Kitu with a question. You know, we were talking yesterday, and you're so passionate about creating. I think what we're talking about is allowing a billion flowers, a billion Africans to bloom, as it were. And how do we do that? This is obviously part. Th this is obviously part, uh, Dr. Kitu, of your effort to make that happen. Uh, you know, to, to sort of prove, prove a catalyst. Do you want to? just give us a little bit more flavor about the types of things you're doing. You've spoken at a high level, but I know for a fact that, you know, it, this is a high level meeting, but you're also looking to hit the ground and hit it really hard and make these sort of entrepreneurs, <laughs> kickstart all these entrepreneurs across the continent. All right, thank you. Um, my sense is political leaders and global wordsmiths bring up and even facilitate grand ideas of what is possible. But it takes entrepreneurs to turn that into achievable products. Two things were interesting to me. Three. On a recent trip to China, I was hosted by Jack Ma at his uh, global headquarters in Hangzhou. And while I was there, I got to see Jack in the afternoon because he was meeting the Prime Minister of Malaysia in the morning. And what had the Prime Minister of Malaysia come to ask of Jack Ma? That he saw that Alibaba had built capacity in, in China. It's not just about looking out for trade, but that you're demonstrating you can grow small, vulnerable producers in your country through uh, an electronic platform presence. And Malaysia was saying, can you help us be the second country to do what you've done in, in China. This morning, in the presence of the President of Kenya, I told Jack, one of the reasons I brought here is to ask you this before the President of Kenya. Can Kenya be the next one after Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> now, that's what happened when I was in Hangzhou. But after Hangzhou, both Jack and I went to the One Belt, One Road Summit, where we were with the President of Kenyatta. And the president of China, in the many things he said, had two things that I thought were very important to this country. The first one was an announcement that it is now official policy of the Chinese government to help build capacity in the National Standards Bureau of developing countries, especially in Africa, for them to administer the Chinese standard, which will allow more export of African produce to China without being facing the risk of rejection because of standards at entry point. That is a very important thing for those of us in the But the second one is that the only point on the African continent where the one belt, one road route touches Africa is Mombasa. I saw on a map there a route being taken towards Cairo. That was not in the original thing. Out of Mombasa, the route should go towards West Africa. Yes. yes. And it takes entrepreneurs, visionaries, and players, many of whom are in this audience, yes, to facilitate that the route goes towards West Africa, does not go towards Cairo. Thank you. Before I, I jump to my next question, uh, and thank you for that, there were lots of interesting points there. Why I'm, I'm from Mombasa myself, and I'm really proud that the One Belt, One Road uh, it, it, uh, presence is in Mombasa, and I'll remind everybody in this room that in the 15th century, there was a Muslim admiral in China called Zheng He, he was also a eunuch, but that's not relevant. <laughs> Um, who came all the way uh, to Lamu, and actually they later discovered that some sailors were left behind, and they, they found Chinese DNA five, six hundred years later from that arrival. So it's particularly sweet six hundred years later. Uh, it shows you that history really moves in amazing ways. Thank you, Dr. Kitu. Um, to your right is Jean. Jean is the Managing Director of Standard Chartered Bank in China. We are grateful to Standard Chartered Bank for sponsoring this event here today. And um, <laughs> we were talking earlier, uh, Jean and I, about uh, the China-Africa Trade Corridor and Standard, bank have played a, Standard Chartered Bank have played a huge role in uh, building that information highway. <laughs> And the question I was putting to Jean was, you know, if you look at that uh, corridor, it was once very much uh, raw commodities going one way, 
And I wanted Jean to talk to us a little bit about what that corridor looks like in five and ten years' time, because I think it's surely going to metasize and look completely different, and people like Jack are going to change the way it looks, I hope. Definitely, yes. Jean. Thank you, Alexander. So thank you. It's, um, it's my uh, pleasure to be here. It's, uh, we, we just arrived last night. I am here. It's actually not stand for China, but also stands for Africa as well, because the Standard Chartered Bank has been operating in both markets for over 150 years. So China, Africa, is our DNA. It's in our DNA. So to be very honest, I w would like to share our view about the corridor things. It's actually corridor is not new. It's not new. We have been, you know, doing corridor business for years. But it's very excited to see that. Over the years, we see this, this, all, all these things evolved um, various stages. For example, I, I'd like to echo um, Carol's uh, the version things. The version point 1.0 is that all, all about material, raw materials, micro minings, and this, um, you know, uh, this is uh, natural resources. That's very, very natural attractive. And then we come to the second, second version version 2.0, it's all about a you know, huge investment to come to this market. It's about to focus on these uh, um, infrastructure things, ports. We see ports, railways, and, uh, and uh, these uh, infrastructure things. And uh, this is very important, because when the um, overseas investors do look at this market, the one point, one, they pay very close attention to this infrastructure. They will lower the cost of uh, uh, logistics, of course. And then we're very excited to see these Chinese companies come to this market to build up the manufacturing plants. <coughs> it's not about um, raw material anymore. It's about finished goods. It's about to serve the local markets and to uh, export these finished goods to all the rest of the world. So we are facilitate that as well. So then we, we see a lot of uh, job creates in these markets. And then we see this um, high tech things and, and all these um, technology things is moving, transferred to this market. We see the labor market is, high, is getting trained. In. And there's all these good things happening. And then trade, of course. We see trade is increasing, has been increasing very fast in the past years. So all these things is happening here. And so then when Alikand asked me about um, what is the next, about version 3.0, I think uh, Chairman Ma has already described the full picture for us. I don't have this answer. I think the answer is actually is to come from all of you young entrepreneurs here. By the way, I, I would like to share my um, observations. If you look at the delegations of uh, Chairman Ma's, um, uh, you know, today is bring to this um, event, it's all about um, healthcare, uh, fintech, um, finance. And also, all these uh, you know, unconventional investors, they're coming to this market. So uh, if you look at the, um, Kenya, Kenya is not only the gateway to the whole Africa, but also it has already been the world leader in the, um, in the mobile money technology. Right? So this, is a, this market has already achieved a lot. And then we, we know there was a huge plan about the agriculture. So all these kind of things happening. And China, nowadays, we have an um, one by one rose initiative. And I, I, I truly believe Africa will benefit a lot from that. So if you ask what is happening in the next five years, I, I see we, we could see much more beyond five years. We are very excited to see um, the connection. It's all about the connections. And uh, as an international bank of a standard charter bank, we will facilitate all the finished goods through Africa to Asia to the rest of the world. So that's all the points here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to segue into a friend, Bob Collymore. Uh, today, Bob, you know, you and Safaricom are ubiquitous. Um, if you were measuring the, sh the share of reach of Kenya, M-Pesa has had more impact on that share of reach than anything else. I remember seeing a tweet from Bill Gates about, about you. So it's, it's gone so far. It's just amazing. And in many ways, it's allowed us to, to reinvent ourselves into something modern, which we are. Um, 
renowned all over the world for innovation. Bill Gates is tweeting about it. Bob, in your opinion, what does it take to infect the rest of the country, to create not one safari com, but a hundred, so that we're not talking about kneecapping of one company, we've got a hundred out there. Tell us, Bob. <laughs> um, because I, this is about innovation. I think it's, uh, what you have to do is just go solve a problem. Uh, we get a lot of people who come up with some great inventions, and inventions and innovation are two different things. So there are a lot of inventions out there which aren't solving problems. Uh, and you know, what, what Jack did it was to solve a problem. And he didn't look at the challenges that he had. And we were chatting earlier about um, not having mobile phones and not having access to the internet. Uh, but he knew there was a problem to solve. And, and I think with us, it was also a problem to solve. Uh, and I don't know whether Batanga and Demo is in the room, but I remember him saying a little while back that in Africa, we are blessed with having very many problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it is in trying to solve those problems that lay the opportunity. Uh, you know, sadly, we tend to have this tendency that if Jack is doing something, then I'm going to do exactly what he's doing. Uh, but actually, the trick is, look out for the problems and try and solve them, whether it's healthcare, and we have very many of our Chinese colleagues here today who are from the healthcare sector, whether it's agriculture, whether it's fintech. So I would say, you know, let's just go out and try and solve problems. And uh, I would say, I think we've, we've got a bit of a plan on how we can make this thing work in, um, in other parts of the continent. I was teasing Bob earlier, saying that the only p very few people have created more value than he has. Um, Nick uh, Nesbitt, ch chairman of Kepsa, um, you've been both an entrepreneur in the IT space, uh, you're now head of IBM. What in, your view does it, what in your view does it take for us to create an Alibaba on the continent or create many Alibabas? What, what do we need? What is the secret sauce that we've got to put in to our dish? All right. Uh, thanks, Ali Khan. That's, Pleasure. That's a, that's a tough question. I think uh, the easiest thing is to probably wave your tail and get bought by Jack Ma. And then <laughs> but uh, more seriously, when I, when I think about entrepreneurship in Africa, and if anybody's doing any business seriously here, whether you're Vimal Shah or Kamal over there or Pewin Cabs over there, or even as IBM, you're, you are an entrepreneur because it is so difficult to do business in Africa. You're just like this the whole time. People don't show up on time. They don't pay you when they say they're going to. They don't yeah. call you back. Uh, everybody <laughs> complains they don't have enough skills. And it just goes on and on and on. And still in there, you have to extract value to keep going. And for the people who've been able to make it, you see James Mwangi sitting here and Dr. Manu, who've been able to make it, my hat goes off to them. Because as Jack was saying, Europe, America, it's all done. Here, you're still creating it. So what does it take? Like Aiden in business school, you got to sit with people, right? I, I got to sit like this with Steve Jobs. And you could, you could hear the difference between them and the rest of us normal penguins was, was this, was their attitude. And I think in Kenya, in East Africa, in Africa, probably even parts of China, to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to maintain that strong, positive, forward-looking attitude that you can keep focusing on the horizon, but you don't focus on the path to get you there. You can only see what's in front of you, and you just have to have a firm belief in yourself that you're going to get there. And I don't think the role models that we have in Kenya today are projecting that image, that you have to work, and you've got to start banging sufurias like Manu Chandaria, and then eventually you, you bang <coughs> Mabati sheets. But it's that. So we have to preserve that. That's the first thing. And I think we have to instill in our entrepreneurs the, the sense of, not even the sense, the strong belief that you've got to believe in yourself, you've got to surround yourself with people that also believe in it, and you've got to do everything you can to preserve that. The, so that's the individual. I think in terms of the environment, and as Kepsa, we're responsible for creating the right environment. The young people, the people. We've got to invest in the skills. As, as IBM, we're investing heavily in something called IBM DNA, which is a $70 million project called Digital Nation Africa where we're trying to reach 25 million people on the continent and teach them the new things around analytics and cognitive computing and IoT and so on. But as Kepsa, we're also trying to create jobs in partnership with the government or even with the private sector. So we have to focus intently on creating an environment where people can work and have the skills to do it. 
The second thing that I think is really important in Africa is to de-risk business. And de-risking means getting data. We don't have enough data to make decisions. New technologies like Internet of Things means that we'll be able to understand healthcare, epidemics, where your car is, what's happening to what's happening at your house, what's happening with your children. So I think as Bob was saying, just solve problems. Since we have so many problems, how do we use data to solve that? And the third thing that I think perhaps Jack has solved, but we really need to solve in Africa, <coughs> is supply chains. You just don't have any predictability in what is coming to you. I think even in the States, Jeffrey Bezos talked about the last mile in delivery for Amazon was a big challenge. In Kenya, we got problems with addresses, you got problems with border border, you got so many problems. So if we can focus on you know, the people, getting smarter about the data so we can make better decisions, and really focusing hard on supply chains, whether it's for bananas, as a Twiga Foods is doing, or whether it's for the goods coming out of the port, it's reducing the trade barriers, um, tariffed and non-tariffed, we can create the environment. Thank you. That's right. I've got a question. I've got a question for the chairman before I hand it over to my colleague Charles over there. He's going to ask a few, take a few questions and answers. First of all, two questions actually, which is a terribly Kenyan habit, but since I'm the moderator, I will, I will, I will be allowed to ask two questions. Did you ever have a time when you described three times not going to university, uh, KFC, did you ever time, did you always have the self-belief? Did you always believe that you were going to come through the other side? No. Did you ever have dark days when you think, what the heck, what's happening here? I have a lot of dark days. Mm. Even to today, I have a lot of dark days. Mm. But what am I going to do? Mm. Cry? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to face it. Because when you, it's not, it's not a good feeling when you're rejected. It's, as I say, you know, I'm uh, applying for KFC waiter. Twenty-four people go, twenty-three <coughs> accepted, and I was the only one left out. Then, uh, okay. So it's not. I I did. I had a lot of. Uh, Terrible days. I mean, now I I, told, I talked to the uh, young people this morning, young entrepreneurs, that I had a much more trouble than all the people put together. <laughs> but you have to face it, because it's like solving problems. The value of entrepreneur is to solve problems. I complained Bill Gates 30 years ago. I don't I don't like IBM. I don't like Oracle because I believe these guys are taking all the opportunity we're supposed to have. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I calm down and say, well, so what value I can bring to the neighbors, to the people I know? What the difference I can? Because the, if you can solve the problem for the others, the bigger problem is, the, the, bad, the bigger opportunity will be. When most people start to complain, calm down, how can you solve it? If you, most people complaining all their life. Yeah. And these people never have a chance. That's your yeah. spot on. So this is what I say that, you know, if I've got problems, what, what should I do? Crying or complaining? Solve it. Because you cry, the problem is there. You complain, the problem is there. <laughs> so you solve it. And then you, if you really happen to solve the problem, that's the opportunity. So uh, I, think, I think, you know, I'm coming here not to inspire the Africa. I think I'm inspired by you guys. I bring my colleagues here, the, those successful business, Chinese business people. As I say, you know, it's very difficult to find another Jack Ma in China, but you may find a lot of Jack Ma's in Africa. Wow. Right? This is, this is, this is you see, in Kenya, I was, I was surprised by the speed of the internet. Thanks for oh, yeah. To Africa. We're moving <laughs> fast. And this means Canada is connected to the world. And in the future, I, as I said, more than 80% of the business must connect to the internet. So Canada is connected to the world. How can we sell things across the, this thing? If for us, people say, you know, Alibaba, you're that big size, right? Our, our, our GMV sales last year, 500 50 billion US dollars, which rankings number 21 country GDP in the world. So I say, oh my God, you're so big. 
Then where will you go? Without a big vision, without thinking about what problem can solve to the world, you will never be grow fast. Even our size this year, our, our revenue this year, we still have 45 to 48 percent growth. Wow. And wow. where did this come from? Where does the money come from? <laughs> the money comes from solving problems for the others. We believe that in the next 20 years, we want help to build up an online community that can enable, that can enable every young people, every small business. If you want to sell globally, we help you. If you want to buy globally, we help you. If you want to deliver globally, we help you. And if you want to pay globally, we help you. If you want to travel globally with just a mobile phone, we help you. Only by solving these problems, these are the problems small business hate and they worry. If we can solve this problem, that's our revenue come from. So I think African, all the entrepreneurs, think about what problem you solve for the others. And I spend most of the, my, my time thinking about what the problem the world is going to face in China in 10 years. What problem China is going to have in the next 5, 10 years. And think about, because we cannot compare to the other people who has a rich father or, or, or powerful uncle. The only thing we can compete is who can imagine five years later what the problem in China will be and I start to prepare now. When the problem comes, I have a solution. And that solution is where the money comes from. That is the way we compete. This comes to hand over that, my second part of the question. What does it take to get you 41, you said, I think everyone said 41 billion. So on an, if Sub-Saharan Africa is 2.5% of global GDP, what's 2.5% of 41 billion? 4.1, it's a billion dollars, Jack. How do we get your portfolio properly allocated? How do we get that billion dollars allocated to Africa? That's my question, and hopefully all to Kenya, because that is actually a market neutral strategy. <laughs> well, I think uh, first, how did we realize our gold dreams in day and night work? And day and night a painful work, and never give up. And finding good people. So what I see Kenya this morning, you know, for a short time, I see so many young people with the ideas. Those ideas are as good as the ideas I've heard in Silicon Valley in China. I, I never expect I would see so many great ideas this morning. And the speed of the internet and the passion for the future. These are the basic things. And I would say is that think about the the world is going to be data driven. From IT to DT is the trend. From IT to DT is going to challenge a lot of successful companies, successful nations. Because IT guys have to change themselves a lot to move to DT. For people like us, we don't have anything. So we start to do DT directly. And the other thing is the, beat, the business of manufacturing is going to be, beat, it was B2C in the past century. In the future, will be C2B, consumer to business. In the past 20 years, we make a people like a machine. Next 20 years, we will make a machine like a people. So all these big changes, changes means opportunity. And what for us, I've been thinking a lot in the past two hours what we can do, what we can bring, what problems we can solve to Africa. So I think the thing we want to do is looking for good partners. And we will join the force together with the corridor. And then investing in the uh, environment that empower those entrepreneurs. And the very, very uh, important is the partners. Because and I talked to the president and Dr. Kutui this morning, thinking about you know Kenya with the great infrastructure you have here. You might be uh, a, 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 a you know a, a hub, e hub, which I say in the older days called a Silk Road. In the future, called an e road. So you need to use this hub to all the things come to Africa, all the things Africa going to the world have to go through this kind of uh, things. 
So I have a lot of ideas, and these ideas I have to digest and discuss with my friends and colleagues, and I will come back again and do something more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very good. Fortunate, but I must say this one hour has taught me more than I learned <laughs> in many, many years at school. Charles, it's over to you, and then we're going to have some closing remarks from the Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Jack Ma, Dr. Kitui, the CS, and all the great entrepreneurs here, we are privileged to have Jack, and we will then be able to ask him a few questions. Um, unfortunately, we are pretty pressed for time. So I think we will take uh, possibly just five questions. Um, Carol spelled out the opportunities that abound in Kenya. Uh, Dr. Kitui talked about trading your goods outwards. And uh, Jack Ma said it is not infrastructure, but passion. So along those lines of uh, innovation, what is Africa waiting for? Um, I will also allow. Um, some questions from the Chinese delegation here to the Kenyans about uh, the products that and the finished um, goods that they might want from here, and some questions from Kenyans uh, possibly to to uh, to Jack. So um, let's see where do we begin. Um, maybe we'll take one at a time. I'll start with the lady over there, please. Uh, Keep the question brief. Do not give us the story of your life. Just ask a straight question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Nyakan Munyeki. I'm the CEO for Timeless Women of Wanda, driving Africa's social and enterprise uh, transformation uh, through enterprise development and focusing on women. I'm also the chair of the Global Innovation Society of Kenya. We have some innovators in the room. Um, my question goes to, and thank you very much for the feedback on the panel. My question goes to Jack Ma and uh, CS Adam Mohammed. Any other panelists can support that. Um, in the, in uh, building access to markets, and especially opening up China goods for the world, uh, I'd like to know how you gov the government of China made it possible for production, because there's lots of inputs, tax barriers, and things like that for exports. How did the uh, government of China make it possible for Chinese to produce you know, and innovate very wide array of goods that were available to be sold into the public. And then to C.S. Aden, um, you know, looking at the government of Kenya's role in helping innovators innovate and enterprises to produce made in Kenya, made in Africa goods, what are we doing to make that affordable and cheap? It's, it's mainly not the government's job to make uh, the innovation it's the entrepreneur's jobs. Okay. And, and fortunately or not, the government normally says we need innovation, but they, would, they probably would stop innovation, but with a good heart. <laughs> it's entrepreneurs demand to discover the need and create it. So it's the people that make the huge challenge, ch change. Because we have 1,000 people, I'm told, at the University of Nairobi waiting, we will just take two questions back to back so that he can answer. And please direct your questions to uh, our guest. Um, I don't think there's need to ask Adam any question. So, um, uh, Dr. Kirubi. <laughs> and um, the second question is uh, the gentleman over there with the half court. Yeah. Yes. Jack, as um, <coughs> chairman of the brand Kenya, and my minister here, I'd like to ask you, can you be our industrial ambassador in China to bring industries to Kenya? Two, can we, can we form an organization called AAGOA, which means Africa Asia Growth Opportunity Act with Asia? Because I've seen Agoa means that we have to keep selling second-hand goods. Thank you. Okay. Let's take your question as well so that uh, he can answer both. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is, as, as uh, requested to directly to Jack Ma, my question to you is, over the years, uh, the countries that uh, like 
give money to the United Nations. Various organizations have changed. And there are different barriers of, uh, like, the United States produce, uh, gives 22% and things like that. But over time, countries are becoming very conservative. And uh, it's, I, I personally feel it's not very long before countries stop giving money to the United Nations for the various causes and the various good things they do. They provide peace around the world. My question is, are companies like Alibaba and bigger companies all over the world ready to give money to the United Nations so that we can prosper quicker? And also, is the United Nations, um, are, we, are we willing to create any uh, profitability so that we can cover at least the basic costs like personal costs in the future? All right, so let me answer this uh, gentleman chairman's question whether I will be the ambassador of uh, African industry. Uh, bring more Chinese uh, manufacturing here globally and uh, selling. This is, this is my honor. I will be happy to do that. <laughs> and uh, I'm, gonna write a, I'm gonna write a lot of things these days, uh, introducing Africa. I think Africa should bring a lot of uh, tourists from China yeah. to here. Because we have, you know guys, we, China, have last year 130 million people traveling outside China last year. It's like a movie nation. <laughs> and I don't know how many Chinese people travel to Africa. And when they come here, when they see these people, when they see the excellent environment and views, and I think they will love here, they will invest more here. So it's, this, is what I, this is what I think I would be happy to do that. And most importantly, is introducing Africa to the other part of the world instead of introducing Chinese products to Africa, which we've been doing that for years. Yeah. They don't need me. This is not the problem that I, I, I can solve, or this is not the problem that I want to solve. A lot of people know how to solve it. But sell Africa to the world, this is something that I really want to do. For the United Nations questions, uh, Dr. Kutuika can answer better. Company like us is not about giving money. A company like us is a creative value for the world. All right, thank you. Just um, I, I confirm that uh, we agreed with Jack before he came that he wants to be an ambassador for creating growing African fashion industry. And I'm very glad that he just confirmed that. Um, on the question about the United Nations, the reality is that multilateralism is going through very severe, challenging times. The growing nativism in parts of the industrial, uh, traditional industrialized society, the growth of opportunistic extremist groups as political mainstream in some countries has challenged us. Only last week, the United Nations reduced its budget for peacekeeping by $600 million. What it means for us is we have to find new smart partnerships, partnerships with the uh, private sector, uh, much more concrete engagement on ideas. And also you'll see increasingly that UN agencies start having complementarity instead of what you've been seeing as competition on the ground. One agency is trying to do what the other agency is trying to do. And the phenomenon of one UN agency hiring consultants to do what expertise in another UN agency has ability to do. So we are having to deal with this, but it's not a very generous condition. It's not a generous situation. But the best way to lower the cost of reduced UN budgets is keep the peace in our territories. Then we don't have to have people coming to try to impose peace on our behalf. Thank you. Uh, we've run out of time. Uh, I think uh, Kepsa wanted to give a gift to the okay, guests. So, uh, sorry? Okay, Chinese module. Okay, uh, one question from the Chinese uh, uh, delegation, man. And then I will now hand over to uh, Ali Khan. He will take us to the rest. Okay, uh, when I say Karibu, ah. <laughs> yes, my name is Dylan Yu, uh, the CEO of the Yushin Group Limited. We are the local manufacturers involved in the, uh, doing the business in the electrical and the power sectors. My question to our chairman, Ma, today is the, yes, we understand uh, you, are you are coming today for the, to enhance and establish the channels for e electronic uh, commerce. Yes, but I think, uh, um, I don't know, um, in Africa, as we've been here for over 10 years, yes, so we, we felt uh, in, in terms of the infrastructure, that is where we are a bit lack of here. 
and to get to create more opportunities uh, in the electronic commerce industry, we need to uh, build up the capacity for the nation in terms of the infrastructure first, like the uh, uh, like the power, energy, the roads, if all of these are infrastructures, so the people are able to have that capacity to do the electronic commerce. Yes. So uh, my question to Chairman is: the uh, Liu Alibaba Group, do you have any plans to invest? in certain areas, industries, like the energy, power, or infrastructures, to create more employment also for the nation, please. Thank you. Yeah, of course, we are, uh, we are not interested in power and energy. We are interested in looking for partners who are interested in building up, because we are not expert on that. We are extremely interested in looking for those companies that are working on payment those companies who are interested in building up logistic service centers, and those companies that are uh, supporting entrepreneurs, we will invest and in giving know-how to them. So this is what we do. We're, we're doing different from American companies. They go some country, they do everything themselves. Our job is to go any country, any area, finding partners, enable partners to be big, because we want to make sure every place we go, we build up companies for local, not build companies for us. Because only by that way, we can, we can grow together. So this is our vision that we want looking for more partners here. Really, um, I, I'm aware you've got hundreds of students who are baying for Jack Chairman Jack Ma, <laughs> and I can understand why. Yeah, because they're going to learn more in that one hour than they would have done. No disrespect. <laughs> uh, Chairman, it has been a real privilege to uh, have you here. It's been inspirational. I can see everyone's like buzzing in this room as I am. Really grateful. Um, Kepsa leadership would like to present you uh, with a gift, and then uh, the Cabinet Secretary will make some closing remarks. <coughs> No, one sister. Oh, sister. Oh, okay. Here, give us a they come up, Let me just say the reason why we are giving you a monumental Thank lion. Because we very talk much. about Asian tigers, and we felt strongly that uh, Kenya is part of the Africa lions. Wow. So this is what we want to remind you. So the next time you're coming, we want to be the biggest economy in Africa among the African lions. Thank you. Can you all be seen? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, I have for my colleagues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Yes. Spend the young people. You'll be seeing the Jandaria Center for Performing Arts. Okay. Thank you. No, no, I'm not, but I've seen I'll be around. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think. Uh, Can I introduce you to our. In the interest of time, uh, I would like to say a big thank you to Jack Ma uh, and Dr. Kitui, who has uh, made this possible, all the attendees. This is a very rare opportunity, and I hope you have benefited in the short time that we've been. He's being waited by a number of university students, and he has one or two other engagements. So please put your hands together for Dr. Ma and for all the wonderful Thank inspiration. You. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.